Assalamu alaikum. In one of uh, our previous lectures, uh, we talked about a simple loop of wire rotating in a magnetic field uh, created by poles uh, with curved pole faces. Uh, we learned that this coil, a uh, single turn coil, is of rectangular shape and from our discussion in the last lecture, we learned that only voltage is induced in this side of the coil and in this side of the coil and no voltage is induced in this uh, segment and as well as in this segment. Uh, when this conductor is under this pole face, then polarity of the voltage as we learned in our uh, previous uh, discussion was uh, this was the polarity of the voltage in this side of the conductor and this was the polarity of uh, voltage uh, in this side of the coil. The total voltage was uh, sum of these two voltages uh, and uh, that was graphically shown in this uh, figure. When the coils were under pole faces, uh, this, these coils then 2 VBL voltage was induced, which was available at this point. Now this loop is, uh, ro this rotor is rotating. After a while, these conductors, this side and this side will have moved to this uh, position. And since uh, flux density at this location is zero, so no voltage uh, is being, uh, will be induced uh, when these the sides of the coil are at this location. After a certain time, this coil would have been rotated and this side of the coil would be now under this pole face and this will uh, be under this pole face and uh, hence again voltage uh, will be induced in these two sides of the coil. However, the polarity of the voltage would have been reversed. That is uh, now this uh, will be the polarity of the voltage. So uh, the voltage which will be available at the terminals of this coil will be again uh, 2 VBL but now with opposite polarity. This voltage is minus 2 VBL. Uh, this voltage uh, uh, although it remains uh, constant uh, for a certain time however it is not unidirectional, how to convert this uh, bidirectional voltage signal into a unidirectional voltage signal. The arrangement that we learned in the last lecture uh, was to insert uh, commutator segments, split rings. We had placed uh, a split ring uh, and each side of this coil was connected to this uh, uh, split ring and uh, brushes were placed over here. These brushes are in electrical contact with this coil and uh, as uh, the coil rotates, the contacts with the brushes also rotate and therefore uh, at this point we get a unidirectional voltage signal. That is, uh, we get this voltage signal. Although it is not pure uh, DC but it is a unidirectional voltage signal. Uh, this process of obtaining a unidirectional voltage out of the rotor of a DC machine that is called commutation. Uh, this commutation process of commutation uh, looks quite simple for a simple DC machine where there is only one loop. However, in real DC machines uh, there are multiple loops of uh, wires and the process of commutation is not uh, so simple. And in today's lecture we shall talk about uh, the process of commutation in a DC machine with four loops. That is again uh, relatively a simple machine uh, but uh, that will demonstrate the principle that is there in real DC machines. If we look at this uh, split ring uh, from the front it will look like this one. Half circle uh, circular rings and uh, brushes are placed which are in electrical contact with this split ring. This split ring from the front looks like this one. So let's talk about uh, the process of commutation in a DC machine with four loops. So here we have uh, a DC machine with north pole and south pole. The pole faces are curved so that we have 
uniform flux density linking with the coils and it is also perpendicular to the surface of this rotor. Uh, we have four coils over here. Uh, since uh, we have 2D figure over here, we cannot uh, show the complete coil. Uh, we have only shown the conductors in which voltage is being induced. That is, uh, here is uh, the real situation. Here we have a rotor of a uh, simple, of a small DC uh, machine. Uh, the rotor uh, is laminated to uh, minimize the eddy current losses. And inside uh, this rotor, there are notches curved into uh, this rotor in which we place coils. So if we look it from the front, uh, we can only see the sides of these uh, coils. Uh, one side, uh, this is uh, coil one. One side of this coil is over here. And let's call it uh, coil one. And the other side of this coil is over here, one dash. The second coil, is um, over here two coil two and its opposite side side is two dash. Then we have a coil three and three dash over here and coil four and coil four dash four coils. It is uh, difficult to show uh, all the sides of this coil uh, on this two D figure. We have only shown the conductors uh, which are placed uh, like this one. The uh, this, uh, for example, coil 2 and 2, two sides. At the back end, these toy coils are shorted. On the front uh, side, we are getting wires com coming out of these loops. These coils uh, uh, are uh, placed in a uh, particular uh, arrangement. One side of the coil is on the outer edge and the uh, other side is at the inner edge. Look at this coil 1 and 1 dash. 1 is at the outer edge, 1 dash is at the inner edge. What is its advantage? Uh, the advantage is mechanical. That is, uh, this coil will not come out uh, of the rotor uh, if uh, this with this particular arrangement. Uh, if, for example, we would have placed both the sides of coil 1 at the outer side, outer surface of the rotor, then it would have uh, come out of the surface of the rotor. On the uh, front end, this coil, these coils are connected to commutator segments. And number of commutator segments is the same as the number of coils in a DC machine. Commutator segments, whenever you see commutators in a machine, you should quickly guess that that is a DC machine. So here are commutator segments and these coils are connected to these commutator segments. I cannot show this uh, 3D object over here. So let's uh, uh, draw these commutator segments uh, like uh, this one. These are four commutator segments. And uh, let's also name these commutator segments. Uh, here is uh, this, let's call this segment uh, as uh, segment A. Segment A, segment B, segment C and segment D. Uh, this coil, front end, we are getting two wires out of this coil. Uh, this coil, uh, each coil has uh, this shape. And in this diagram, only these uh, sides are shown by circles. At the back end, these are sharded. At the front end, we are getting two wires of these coils. So, uh, for coil one, uh, this uh, coil one uh, is connected to segment uh, a. That is, one side of this coil is connected to segment A. Likewise, for coil 2, one side is connected to segment B. And for coil 3, this is connected to segment C. And for D, it is connected to segment, uh, this coil 4 is connected to segment D. And uh, the other sides of each coil, uh, coil uh, 1 dash is connected to segment B, uh, 2 dash is connected to segment C. Why? We shall learn later, but just uh, over here uh, we see the connections. Uh, this 3 is connected to B and 4 dash is connected to A. Then uh, just like uh, the commutation for uh, a uh, simple loop, we had uh, placed two brushes. 
Uh, here we shall place brushes over here, uh, one brush and the other brush uh, like here which will be in contact with these commutator segments. These are shown over here and from these brushes we shall be getting uh, voltage signal. So from these brushes voltage will be available uh, at these two points. So I hope this uh, diagram is clear. So uh, let's uh, determine how much voltage we shall be getting uh, out of this machine at the brushes. Uh, this diagram uh, is a bit uh, complicated. Uh, we draw another diagram. Uh, we draw another diagram that is more uh, readable. Uh, we see that uh, for uh, here each coil, for each coil there are uh, four segments and voltage is induced only in these two segments. And let's uh, represent these uh, segments with small voltage sources. So I use the same uh, notation as uh, that is used in the book. So uh, this uh, small voltage source is uh, shown by a coil. Uh, why a coil? Because uh, in real machines there will be not a single turn of wire, rather there will be multiple turns of wire and finally we shall be getting only two uh, wires of, out of this coil. So this is uh, showing a simple coil, one side of the coil and likewise other side of the coil. Coil uh, 1, uh, so this is conductor 1 and this is conductor 1 dash. Uh, similarly for coil 2 uh, we have two sides and uh, let's uh, uh, show them by this diagram. This diagram uh, which I'm going to sketch only shows the electrical connections, not uh, the physical placement of these uh, coils uh, physically. You know that these coils, these sides are placed like this one. This is only showing the electrical connections. Uh, let me first uh, sketch the full uh, diagram and then I shall explain it. So here is uh, side 1 of the coil and here is side 1 dash of the first coil and each uh, uh, side of the coil is represented by a small voltage source and how much voltage is induced in uh, each conductor we remember from our discussion in the last lecture that a voltage VBL where V is the velocity, B is the flux density and L is the length of the conductor this much voltage is induced in each side of the coil so let's represent this voltage by E E is the voltage that is being induced in the coils. So coil side 1, side 1 dash. Similarly uh, side uh, 2 and side 2 dash, side 3 and side 3 dash, 4 and 4 dash. And uh, since uh, these conductors are under pole faces, voltage E is induced in each uh, side of this coil, so voltage E. So one dash and one are shorted at the back end. So these are shorted. One and one dash are shorted at the back end. At the front end, we are getting one wire, uh, two wires out of this coil, one and two wire. Likewise for coil two. What we see is that uh, this coil one is connected to segment A and coil four dash is also connected to segment A. That is these uh, two ends, that is uh, side 1 of this coil 1 and side 4 dash of coil 4, these are sharded through the, this ring. So let's shard them. 1 and 4 dash are sharded through this uh, uh, commutator segment. Similarly, uh, 1 dash is connected to B, 2 is also connected to B, so 1 dash and 2 are sharded. So let's short them. And also 2 dash and 3 are sharded and 3 dash and 4 are sharded. And uh, then uh, we also show the commutator segments. So here are our commutator segments. A, segment A, segment B, segment C, segment D. And 1 and 4 dash both are connected to segment 
A. 1 and 4 dash both are connected to segment A. Similarly, 1 dash and 2, 1 dash and 2 are connected to segment B. And here is the situation. Uh, where are brushes located? One brush is over here in contact with segment A corresponding to this particular time instant and the other one is connected to segment C. So let's determine how much voltage is there uh, in the brushes. Uh, for that purpose we can also determine the polarity of the voltages. Uh, what is the polarity of voltage that is being induced in all these conductors? By uh, we know that uh, voltage induced is given by V cross V dot L. If this rotor is rotating in counterclockwise direction, then uh, for for this particular conductor one uh, three, this is velocity, this is flux density. So V cross V is into the surface of board. So direction of induced voltage can be denoted by a cross over here. Likewise, for conductor 1 dash, it is cross, for conductor 4 dash, uh, for conductor 4 and 2 dash, it is cross. What about polarity of conduct, uh, voltage induced in conductors 2 uh, can be determined again by the uh, this relation that is uh, out of the uh, surface of this board denoted by the dark notation. So, what is polarity of this voltage? Uh, uh, for this conductor, one current is flowing uh, in which direction? Coming out of the surface of board. That is, it will flow into the commutator segment. Uh, that is, current will flow uh, in this direction. So, then what is polarity of the voltage? Uh, polarity of voltage is this one. Because current is flowing in this direction as we have determined over here. Similarly, polarity of all these voltages can be determined it will have uh, this polarity. For this voltage source, uh, this is the polarity. That is, uh, uh, for this conductor 2 dash, here is conductor 2 dash, here. So, current is flowing uh, out of the, com from the commutator segment into the conductor. That is, from the commutator segment to the conductor. That is, this is polarity of current and hence, this is polarity of voltage. Similarly, this is polarity of voltage can be compared with that particular graph figure. And likewise, this minus plus, minus plus, minus plus. These are polarities of voltages. So, where is the voltage between these brushes? Here is a voltage source with voltage E. Another voltage source, these two voltages sources are connected in series. So, E plus E, another E, and another E. So, between these two points, that is between these two points, a voltage of 4E is there. So, a voltage of 4E is being induced. Let's show it on this figure. Corresponding to this particular situation, voltage 4E is being induced. And uh, even uh, we can see that if you move from this parallel path, so again we have 4E, E plus E plus E plus E, so 4E. There are two parallel paths and the voltage available over here is 4E. After a while, this rotor would have been rotated and we will have a new situation. Uh, that situation is depicted in this graph. Uh, this uh, rotor is rotating, so after a while, this uh, this would have move uh, this would move to this position, and it is shown over here. That is here we have uh, one dash, one and one dash, and then two and two dash, three and three dash, four and four dash. The conductors are now uh, the, this rotor has now rotated. Now what is situation? Uh, we can uh, equivalent draw an equivalent diagram over here. Uh, so uh, let's uh, draw uh, a similar diagram over here. Uh, this is now the situation. Uh, this is a diagram showing the electrical connections corresponding to the situation. That is when this rotor has rotated by an angle of uh, 45 degrees. 
so everything uh, is the same except that it has been rotated. Uh, coil 1 uh, and 1 dash, 2 and 2 dash, the same situation, 1 and 1 dash, 1 dash and 2 are sharded, 1 dash and 2 are sharded, 2 commutator segments, 1 is connected to A, 2 is connected to B, the same diagram rotated over here. Uh, we know that brushes, uh, these are fixed at a location, these are not rotating, so brushes are at the same position as these were in this diagram. So brushes are over here, one brush and the second brush. So now what is voltage that is being induced that is available at these points corresponding to this situation. What we see is that uh, this conductor 2 dash uh, and 4, these are still under the south pole. So polarity of voltage is still the same denoted by process. And this conductor 2 and 4 dash, these are still under the north pole. So polarity of the voltage that is being induced in these conductors is the same as over here. What about to this conductor 1, 1 dash, 3 and 3 dash? These uh, conductors are not now beyond pole faces, so no voltage is being induced in these conductors. So in conductor 1 and 1 dash, zero voltage is being induced. Likewise, uh, in 3 and 3 dash, zero voltage is being induced. And what about conductors uh, 2 dash and 2? Uh, the same voltage E is being induced in these conductors. Polarity is the same as it was in the previous case, that is, uh, uh, this is the polarity. Likewise, for 4 and 4 dash, these conductors are under pole faces, so voltage E is being induced and polarity of voltage is the same as it was in the previous case. Now, what is uh, voltage uh, induced uh, in the uh, total voltage that is available over here? Uh, if we move from here, uh, we can move uh, from here to here by following several different paths. For example, if you follow this path, uh, if you follow this path, so from here to here, E plus E, and then E plus E is 2E, and then 0 plus another 0, we reach again at this point. So 2E voltage is available. If we move from here, to here through this path to E voltage and we can also move from here to here still we are getting uh, a voltage to E. So again there are two parallel paths for current to flow and the voltage that is available at the brushes is equal to 2 E. So let me draw it over here. So this uh, situation uh, remains only for a brief time because there is a, a very small gap where there is zero flux density. Uh, so for a brief time, this will the voltage that we shall be getting from this uh, uh, machine will be 2E. There is uh, one uh, problem with this uh, uh, situation over here. Uh, here we know that these conductors are behaving as small voltage sources and the two sides of the voltage source are being sharded uh, through uh, this brush. So that is a problem. However, fortunately, the voltage that is being induced in these conductors is zero. So although two sides of voltage source are being sharded, but that is not a problem because the voltage that is uh, being induced is zero. So we have analyzed this situation. Uh, next, uh, talk about another time instant when this rotor would have further rotated by an angle of 45 degrees. So that situation, uh, let me depict that situation uh, over here. Again, north pole and south pole and uh, this uh, now would have rotated to this location. Uh, this one dash have further rotated by 45 degrees to reach at this point. So one dash over here uh, and one, uh, two, three, four, one dash and here is two dash, three dash and four dash. This is a new situation corresponding to 
uh, time when this rotor has rotated by another 45 degrees. Corresponding to this situation, we can again draw a similar diagram which shows the electrical connections. Uh, what is uh, the situation? The only difference is that this would have will rotate further by an angle of 45 degrees. So I have this situation. Uh, this uh, arrangement has further rotated. So one moved here, one dash, and the rest is the same, two, two dash. Connections remain the same, only this rotor has rotated. So this arrangement has rotated. Brushes stay at their position. Uh, one is connected to segment A, B, C, and D over here. Uh, so this arrangement has rotated. Brushes stay at their position on position. These brushes are in electrical contact with commutator segments. So what is voltage that is available at the brushes corresponding to this time instant? We can again analyze the situation. Now all the conductors are under pole faces and voltage E is being induced in these conductors. We can also determine the polarity of voltage. So where is the polarity in this uh, E1? Uh, it is into the surface of board. Likewise, in all these conductors, it is into the surface of board. For these conductors, uh, this is out of the surface of the board. Uh, can be determined. Polarity can be determined by determining the direction of V cross V. So that is comes out to this one. So this is omega. So uh, V and B. So uh, V cross B rotate V in the direction of B. So out of the surface of board. So here is uh, uh, voltage E is induced in each conductor, each conductor because all the conductors are now under pole faces. And we would also see here is one more coil. Uh, the polarity can be determined, and uh, you will find that this is the polarity of the voltages. So. Uh, please uh, uh, verify that this is uh, the polarity of voltages by comparing this diagram and this diagram. What is voltage that is available over here? If you move from this uh, uh, path, uh, E plus E plus E plus E and 4E voltage is available. Uh, if you move from this parallel path, again 4E voltage. So uh, again there are two parallel paths for the current to flow and the voltage that is available at the brushes is 4 e again. Uh, next, uh, what will be the situation? This will further rotate and now uh, we would have a situation that these conductors will move onto this position and these will be Bijan pole faces and uh, please do that and verify that the voltage we get corresponding to that situation is again 2 e. This situation uh, will continue uh, and we, sh we will have a voltage uh, uh, signal like this one. This is again not uh, a DC, pure DC, but it is uh, better than the previous case where we had a single loop. Over there, there was more fluctuation. Here, we have less fluctuation. And this can be further, uh, it, uh, this uh, signal can be further smoothened by using, by having more number of coils. So in real DC machines, we have more number of coils and far more smooth graph for this one. And uh, some advanced techniques are uh, utilized to further smoothen it by uh, placing these uh, conductors uh, in a slanted position. That is beyond the scope of this course, so we are not going to discuss it. So this process of uh, obtaining a unidirectional voltage signal out of this machine, this is called commutation. A uh, basic principle of commutation in more complex machines is the same as described over here. Uh, uh, this commutation process uh, is uh, associated with uh, a few problems uh, that we shall uh, discuss in later lectures.